Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, please guide and guard my thought, words, and deeds, so that I may please you. My dear brothers and sisters, today is June 2020, Wednesday. Today's readings is taken from St. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 6, 16 to 18. When you pray, fast and give alms. The Gospel goes, Beware of practicing your piety before men in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give alms, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by men. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your arms may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look this mouth like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by men, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who see in secret will reward you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, why did Jesus single out prayer, fasting, and almsgiving for, this, for his disciples? Because the Jews considered these three as the, uh, the cardinal works of the religious life. These were seen as the key signs of pious person and three great pillars on which the good life was based. Jesus pointed to the heart of that matter. Why do you pray, fast, and give alms? To draw attention to yourselves so that others may notice and think highly of you, or to give glory to God? This is the question. These are the questions to examine ourselves. For the first point of meditation is, true piety and devotion to God. The Lord warns his disciples of self-seeking glory. The, uh, the preoccupation with looking good and seeking praise from others. Actually, true piety is something more than feeling good or looking holy. True piety is love and devotion to God. It is an attitude of our reverence, worship, and obedience. It is a gift and walking of the Holy Spirit that enable us to devote our lives to God with a holy desire to please Him in all things. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 2. For the second reflection, completely united with God our Father. 
What is the sure reward which Jesus points out to his disciples? It is union with God our Father. In him alone we find the fullness of life and happiness, truth and beauty, love and joy. St. Augustine of Hippo wrote the following prayer in his Confessions. When I am completely united to you, there will be no more sorrows or trials. Entirely full of you, my life will be complete. The Lord rewards those who seek him with humble and repentant hearts. He renews us each day and gives us new hearts of love and compassion that we may serve in and our neighbor with glad and generous hearts. Do you want to grow in your love for God and for your neighbor? Seek Him is expectant, expectantly in prayer, with fasting and in generous giving to those in need. My dear brothers and sisters, now let us pray together. Lord Jesus, give me a lively faith, a firm hope, a fervent charity, and a great love for you. Take from me all lukewarmness in meditating on your word and dullness in prayer. Give me favor and delight in thinking of you and your grace. Fill my heart with compassion for others, especially those in need, that I may respond with generously. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May God bless you always.